Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Today is Saturday, May 2nd, 2020, and I am happy to report that I've got a nice pick to show you today, uh, Machinist Tools. Uh, as luck would have it, I was able to uh, get together with a gentleman who I had bought the large Walker Turner bandsaw from a while back, and I had bought a few other small items from him while I was there. I ended up going back out and visiting with him, uh, mask on, of course, <laughs> and social distancing respected uh, and was able to put together a pile of stuff that um, he had some stuff that was still sitting there from the last time I was out there and he was ready to move the stuff so um, we came to terms and I want to dive right in and show you uh, got some cheap stuff in here and then also got some real nice little sweet items this first item is a pretty handy little item this is a, uh, a 5c call it um, a jig or it, it basically it, it allows you to hold the 5c call it and then be able to uh, mount this on your table of your uh, milling machine and uh, or I guess you could also use it on a surface grinder table but it's more for milling um, so what we've got this is a phase 2 brand so it's a, a cheap Chinese import 225-202 uh, is the part number on this thing and what we've got is the ability to put a 5C collet in here, and then there is a uh, there's a collet nut, and this would have had a Tommy bar that would stick in here and be able to snug this up to where it's close, and there happens to be a collet in there now, so we'll put this dowel pin in there and see it's loose fit, flip the lever. And that will lock this. Okay, now it's locked. Now I could take this and we could have this on the mill either uh, this way if we wanted to mill a flat across the top here or if we had some other operation where it needed to be up like this, we could do that. Uh, so, and then for repeatability, the idea being is just a matter of this would be bolted down, flip the lever down, take part out, put your next part in. Of course, you could also have a call it stop in there so that every time I put this in, it stops at the same depth. So, kind of a handy little item to have. Um, my spin indexer probably does everything that this does. I can't really think of. This is a little bit handier just because it's a little bit smaller and more compact. Okay, But um, I think I'm probably going to end up selling this because I don't think I need that many redundant uh, jigs for 5C collets. There was another company, I forget who makes it, a uh, company like, uh, had a name like American Eagle or something like that, I think, that made these. And I've seen those come up for sale like between $45 and $65. This one being a Chinese import, I have no idea what it goes for. It'd be easy enough to find out. Oh, ah, that's a kind of interesting. So I just found out on eBay that uh, these things trade for around 65 bucks. One sold on eBay for 65 bucks not that long ago. And the other one I was thinking of was one called uh, by a company called Eagle Rock. So um, I think the Eagle Rock one might be a U.S. made one. But the funny thing is, it's not very popular. So you can buy the Eagle Rock one. Yeah, uh, if you're patient, you can find a deal on an Eagle Rock one and pay about the same money and get it, get one of those. So, um, actually, there's somebody local to me that has one of these for sale. Oddly enough, yeah, and it's the Eagle Rock one, and they want 125 or best offer, and he's had that for sale on eBay listed for a long, long time. No takers on that at that price. And again, it's a it's a handy little tool, but you know, once you get over a hundred bucks for one of these, you're probably better off just putting that money into maybe a decent used um, HV 5C call it fixture. You know, the, one, the kind of indexing one. So, anyways, or even a spin indexer that has horizontal vertical capability. This is more compact, though. You know, a spin index is about that long. So even if you do flip it up you lose some of the clearance under the spindle. And for some people, depending on the operation they're doing, uh, 
size of their mill and different parameters, that might be critical. I don't know. So I'm just taking this collet out of here because um, I'm going to sell this. There's no sense in including a free collet with this because of the next item. Well, thus the drawback to this tool. Takes a little while to unscrew that collet. All that work, and I just noticed this is a this collet. All it's marked as Taiwan, so it's a cheapy collet. Here's the other item I snagged, among several, a collet rack. This has got an Enco uh, sticker on the side here, and it says uh, it's a two thirty nine dash ninety thirty Enco collet rack. So. I was hoping that maybe through some of the, underneath some of this dirt, maybe there's some uh, some nice decent collets. All right, just gave them a little bit of a quick clean just so I could see what we've got here. And the majority of these appear to be just marked uh, Taiwan 5C. So that's uh, just like the one that I took out of that spin indexer. It must have been part of this set. And uh, there are a couple though that might be something else. Uh, this one's marked 5C and the way it's stamped with the, so it kind of is a different, that's probably a different manufacturer right there. And then right down here in the lower corner is a hardinge. So you've got one hardinge call it out of the whole bunch. So I don't know, I'll see if uh, there are any sizes that I need. Um, I try and keep two of each size and then anything that I have surplus to that I usually I offer them for sale all right next item I have here is a uh, a big well relatively speaking large for any of my equipment live center uh, this is marked favor from what I could find online apparently this was a, a Swiss company I don't know if they're still in business and uh, it uh, rotates freely it doesn't look like it's in that bad of shape at all seems like there's nothing wrong with it um, this taper is massive I just checked it. it appears to be uh, MT5 Morse taper 5 the only markings other than uh, the word favor are right below it here it says D5 uh, so I think that means that it's a model D5 and that probably denotes that it's the MT5 taper also, there's a 5020A over here, but no other markings on it. So, not quite sure what I'll ask for that. Um, there's a couple of these on eBay with higher asking prices, but, you know, it doesn't look like they're selling. So, uh, and really couldn't find one of these specifically selling used, but a good live center in MT5 taper, you know, is probably worth somewhere between like 50 and 100 bucks. I don't know about this one, but anyways, got that. Ah, rail mics. We're back to rail mics toolorama, Springfield, New Jersey. I've had several items with these markings on them uh, come through my hands, and they appear to be all items that are made by other companies. And this was just some sort of a supply house. But this is a um, Indical. That's I N D I space C-A-L and looks like uh, this uh, actually this paperwork right here is for an external IndyCal the new external IndyCal which is not what this is in the box you can see the external has these wide wide jaws and this does not I'll get to it in a moment uh, it's interesting here there was a price it looks like looked like they were selling for 25 and they did a price change to just cross that out put 30 and then uh, with the case, and then if you want three pairs of points and eight extensions, less the indicator, uh, 35 bucks. And on the back side here, it shows actually a picture, the instructions for the one that is in here. Okay, so I'll just to give you a look, up close look at that photograph so you can kind of get the general idea here. So that's a DTI sitting on top. And there are various little attachments that come with it. It looks like there's quite a few little points and pieces in here. There's a couple little extensions. There is even a indicator 
point wrench, which I guess might be used for, well, no, that wouldn't be used for these points, interestingly enough. But here's the deal with this. This is a bore or groove measuring tool. And what it does is it allows you to mount a regular DTI right up here. The dovetail on your DTI would sit in this little clamp right here on the top. The point for the DTI would ride on this little anvil right here, so to speak. Okay. And then these two little fingers, all right, would go in your bore or whatever inside diameter you were trying to measure. All right. So the idea is you could reach into a hole, and if you had an in internal groove, this would be a good tool for doing that, right? So I actually picked one of these, I think, a year or two ago at a flea market for like five or eight bucks. But it was just this with nothing else, no attachments or anything. Uh, and that was a pretty good deal based on what these tend to bring on eBay. This one... Um, I'll probably end up selling this one just because it's so complete, all the pieces and everything. I, 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 you know, part of me thinks, well, maybe I should keep it in case I need it. This looks like this is a slot right here for like a federal test master or something to sit right in there if you wanted to keep your indicator in here with it. Don't know what this other paperwork is. Oh, okay, this is a little explanation of the correct point angle for accurate dial reading. This right here is an AccuPro set of telescopic gauges. Um, this part number right here is actually, I guess, an old MSC part number. So these were probably, these are Chinese made imports and they were sold through the MSC catalog, I guess, at some point. And what you've got is you've got a uh, six piece set. This one the largest one is supposed to sit up in here. I think there must have been a way that this would clip in and stay captive, but it just falls out like that, you know, which is annoying. Um, they appear to be nice telescopic gauges at first glance. They've got the satin chrome uh, look to them, and they look like they're in excellent shape. They look like they've hardly seen any use, but they have that... unfortunate crunchiness to them that is so common in a lot of these gauges unfortunately now those of you who watch uh, this old Tony uh, his channel probably have seen the episode where he took apart um, the set that he had I think they were actually a good brand name they were brown and sharp if I'm not mistaken and he was talking about how disappointed he was in the quality. And what he found the main problem was that uh, there was a lack of deburring that had been done to these during assembly. So uh, he took his apart, uh, deburred different areas of them, and, and tuned them up and, and made them a lot nicer. So somebody could probably do that with these if they wanted to. Uh, I noticed that on like the smaller ones doesn't seem to be no nah, there's crunchiness in the smaller ones too but they do work see how that's stuck anyways I'm gonna sell it as a cheap set to somebody watch when I go to close this see how annoying that is like come on really? sure we could figure out a way to get that to stay in there but that's uh, not my problem all right next little grouping of items uh, let's take a look at these first because i thought they were kind of neat these are um fowler branded mag bases okay they've got a fowler number on them of 52-585-010 um but what's unusual about them is unlike a lot of these fowler mag bases instead of having just the uh, threaded hole in the top for a rod, these have these blocks attached to them. Now, I don't know whether or not somebody just made these blocks and, you know, are using the hole that was supposed to be for a threaded rod on these or what. 
But this is how they were, and it's a pair of them. So I was thinking, oh, well, maybe I can find a use for those exactly the way that they are. But I am pretty sure that that's probably just somebody made some sort of a, a an attachment to repurpose these mag bases. They both work perfectly fine. They're not all jammed up. The handles aren't loose. They're in actually pretty good shape. This, I had to laugh when I saw this, because when I opened this old, old case up, which I don't think the outer case has any markings on it, but what's in here is, ta-da, I don't know if this looks familiar, but to you guys who are watching my, channels, my channel regularly and watching all of my flea market pick, flea market finds, and odds and sods videos, you probably will recognize this as a um, uh, something that I just picked up not that long ago and I thought was neat as hell. And this is a, uh, a little depth gauge um, that this one is marked made in Germany and I don't believe this one has any other markings on it. However, I was able to determine on the other one that I had that what this in fact is is made by Mauser the German company. So that's what I thought was so cool about it. And next item is a Sterrett indicator. A pretty old looking Sterrett box, but the uh, indicator looks nice and clean. Uh, it's just like the slightest bit of maybe some rust and spots here, but it's got an unusual back to it. It's got this threaded hole in this buttress on the back here. So what's kind of neat also about this is check this out. This particular uh, Sterrett indicator is branded uh, Kearney and Trekker, the milling machine manufacturer. So the makers of the K&T mills uh, must have ordered this indicator special for them. I wonder if that I wonder if this has anything to do with an attachment on a K&T mill. Huh. I don't think these belong to this. This says blade one piece 302596 and there it looks like there is a sharp. Oh wait a minute. Is that a vernier? Wow, look at that. That's a little vernier, uh, like scale or something, like off a milling machine. There's one over a thousandth inch. It's used by the looks of it. Well, it would be a shot in the dark if that actually comes up as a uh, good part number. 302596. Here's something interesting about this indicator. Uh, first off, it's a plus minus indicator. You could actually measure to the negative side or the positive side of zero, which that's not that unusual. The unusual thing is this shaft with the knob on the end of it right here, this is actually a lock. And what it does is if you have a reading and you want to keep that reading stored, you would turn this lock and now you see I just released the, took my finger off the drop indicator of, uh, stem off the contact point and look, it's staying. And if I turn this and unlock it, it comes back. So with it unlocked, it works like a normal indicator. But with this thing turned, it locks it. Right now it doesn't not moving. Wasn't able to find anything out on this little tiny vernier piece, and since I'll probably never end up figuring out what it goes to, I'll probably just toss it. All right, next up, some more Chineseium. Made in China. I ran the Geiger counter over it and didn't get too much of a reading, so can't be too bad.
box set. Nice size. These are, well, of course, why would they be straight on, right? They probably, they probably are an even number in metric, but these are four and an eighth by three and a sixteenth or so. Yeah, they're four and an eighth square, almost. Huh. Doesn't, it's kind of an optical illusion they get going there. Doesn't look it. But, uh, they're in great shape. Clearly made in China. Number 370. Oh, it does say four and an eighth right on it. Uh -huh. So, uh, I don't see any oopsies on them. The, uh, and there's just some staining on there. Overall in pretty good shape. Come with this style of clamp. Oh, that's rotten pool. Only three out of four of the hold down bolts present. <laughs> oh, wow. I wonder how that happened. Now I know why they were in there the way I took them out. Put them in the other way. Fingers are getting caught in there. Close like that. Yeah, okay. All right, so these are uh, a nice size, decent uh, looking pair of blocks. Don't know what they're going to run, being that they're chinese -ium. Next up are these Vermont Gauge pin sets. Uh, this one's marked HP 1160. It's a 11 thousandths to uh, 60 thousandths minus series. And from what I could tell looking at it, uh, apparently it is missing just one. Some of these are so fine that it's hard to actually see that they're in there, but it is in fact missing the 13 thousandths. Now, this was in there. I don't know if there's anything in this or not. Wonder why this envelope would be in there if it... Well, this was... This is an envelope for drills. Oh yeah, see? Look what's in there. Well, I could tell just by looking at them that whatever these are, whatever these remnants are, they are too thick to be the 13,000th that's missing. So, I'm not going to worry about it. And I'm going to throw that in there and let that go along with whoever gets this set. These were calibrated back in 2012. No, I'm sorry. These were calibrated back in December of 72. And they were due for calibration in 73. Wow. Vietnam era. <laughs> Vietnam era. Uh, gauge pin set. And this is a larger set. This is uh, 61 thousandths to 250 thousandths minus series B. And this set. No, I think maybe I read that wrong on the other one. Because this set is 2012. It was due in 2013, both in November. I, I think I, I read that as a 7, and it's actually just the way they scribbled the 1. All right. So, and this set is, uh, well, I'll tell you what. This set is <laughs> also missing just one right down here in the corner, guys. 63 thousandths is missing. <laughs> That's weird. Two Vermont gauge pin sets. Oh, oh wait a minute. Well, look at this. What the heck's that doing in there? This is a .246. Let's see what's in the .246. This is a .246 minus, which is what's supposed to be in here. I think this is just a .246. I'm not sure. I'm not going to worry about it. But you know, I'm going to put that with my uh, my oddball unsorted spare gauge pins. A while back, I went on a pick, and uh, I um, kind of got 
talked into by the uh, the guy who was selling the stuff. I kind of got talked into buying a whole uh, box of pull studs. And um, I ended up taking those pull studs, figuring out what machine or what size they were and type, and put them up for sale at a buck a piece. And lo and behold, I, I've had very little traction on those. Uh, pretty much nobody wants them. So you might wonder why I would do it again. Well, for one thing, I got these for dirt cheap for this whole bag. And these are marked Mazak tool holders. So I have reason to believe that these are, in fact, pull studs for a Mazak machine. Uh, I think I'm going to have more luck selling these than I did the last ones. Well, just looked up the dimensions on these and it uh, looks like these are in fact going to be uh, Mazak Cat 40 pull studs. Uh, some of them also are, majority of them are through coolant. Some of them aren't. And then apparently um, Fidal uses uh uses the same size because I checked and a lot of people are listing these as Vidal or Mazak pull studs and then I went on a website that shows the dimensions and I checked the dimensions against each other and that appears to be the uh, the case so anyways hopefully I can get a little bit for these <laughs> 